Hi everybody, welcome to the first episode of my new series of No Nonsense Whiskey Reviews. On this episode, we'll be taking a look at the Abelor 10 Year. I've chosen to start here because it's a whiskey that's really easy to get hold of. Now you can go into most of the major supermarkets and it'll be on the shelves. Uh, every now and again it'll come across on a £20 deal. In my opinion, I think that's a great price. I'm not sure what it would come out as normally, maybe £25. Still a pretty good price. Before we get into the whiskey itself, let's have a little look at the background of the whiskey in the distillery. Now this is a, a Speyside whiskey. It's a very small region of the Highlands area, but it's quite densely populated in terms of distilleries. There's like over 80 distilleries in the little area. Speyside whiskies themselves tend to be quite light in flavour. Uh, you, you won't ordinarily find peat or very, very little peat in there. Uh, this is because um, peat isn't naturally occurring in the area. Uh, I guess, you know, these days they probably could import peat, but tradition is, is very important in uh, Scottish whiskies. The uh, Abelor distillery is in a small town of Abelor, uh, which is in the Marais. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. We've got two wash stills and two spirit stills. Uh, in comparison to uh, some of the bigger distilleries like Glenlivet, who have like over 14 stills. That hasn't stopped Avalor from producing award winning whiskies. Almost every expression in their range has received some accolade of some sort. Okay, so onto the Avalor 10 itself. It's a mixture of ex bourbon and ex sherry casks, and it's bottled at 40%. As you can see, it's uh, quite deep golden in colour. Moving on to the sort of lighter browns. Now, in my opinion, I think it's very important to pay attention to the colour, the casks, and the percentage. This will give you an idea about the whiskies that you will enjoy. For instance, if you enjoy a 40% ex sherry cask with this sort of colouring, it's quite likely that you're gonna enjoy something that has that a similar description to that. Obviously the whiskies themselves that produce the new make spirits change the flavour. But as a general rule, it's a good place to start. Okay, let's pour it. Okay, so first we'll give it a quick nose. Now, my nosing technique. As you can see, I prefer not to use a nosing glass. Uh, that's not because I don't like nosing glasses. I just prefer a nice cut glass tumbler. I also prefer not to swirl the spirits. You'll see some people who review it will give it a swirl. And that's okay, you know, if, if that's what they prefer, that's fine. I find personally that it releases too many of the harsher chemicals, too much alcohol, etc., up into the nose. I think that overpowers the other flavours that, that would otherwise come out. I also prefer just to rest the glass on the top lip. You'll see some people put their nose right in. That's for the same reasons that I won't use a nosing glass. Okay, so bearing all that in mind, let's nose this. Well, the, the sherry flavours from the sherry cask is immediate. It's very sweet. Almost like a, like a cake, like a, like a Christmas cake or a fruit cake or something like that. Not harsh at all, very smooth. Okay, let's, uh, let's try the taste. Now again, you'll hear people talk about uh, how to taste. Uh, some people will say that you should swill the drink for as many years as it's had in the cask. Now personally, I prefer just to, just to taste it as long as you want to. 
know, especially if you've got plenty to try. Maybe at a whiskey festival you need to be a bit more conservative with, with how much you put in your mouth at once. But a small sip, allow enough to, to cover your tongue, keep it on there as long as you want to swallow and then that's your kind of that's your taste and your finish in one go. Really sweet and very smooth. You, you, there's some spice in there. Very easy to drink. Once you've swallowed it, you've got a really nice sort of tingling on the edges of your tongue. Not unpleasant at all. The spice stays with uh, none of the none of the alcoholic taste that you might that you might otherwise get. Overall, it's a very pleasant whiskey to drink. Very warming, spicy. And uh, at the deal price, it's hard to not recommend it to anybody. If, if it comes through at £20, you could quite easily have that sit in your whiskey cabinet. It's pretty much perfect for an everyday drinking whiskey. One that you could come back to frequently, and uh, when you've finished the bottle, you could have no problems in going out and buying another one. I think if you're new to whiskey and want to give something a try, other than the kind of bog standard supermarket blends, this would be a great first effort. If you're a seasoned whiskey drinker or somewhere in the middle like I am, then uh, I don't think there's any problems with this at all. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it interesting. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you all next time on a No Nonsense Whiskey Review.